today's video is gonna be a fun one. We are getting so close to leaving for our big East Coast trip, but we still have a few more projects that Bob would like to get done before we go. And stay to the end, because as you would have seen on the thumbnail, Bob is unboxing and installing our new Starlink. So with all that said, let's get started. All right, guys, let me get you up to speed. So we have completed four of our five tasks and let's see where to start. So we've got one more remaining, but the four that we've completed, the first one we did is we purchased brand new tires from Costco. So if you remember, we were having that weird kind of rattle at like 65-ish miles an hour down the highway. And so we, that actually made us a little nervous with our many thousands of miles that we plan to drive out to the East Coast. So we took it into Costco, we got some new tires put on, we went with the BF Goodwrench KO2s. They look amazing. I am so excited to give those a try, both in the dirt, the sand, you know, the mud, the rain, and who knows what kind of weather we're gonna encounter on the East Coast. So we will be prepared with some good tires. Those new tires did take care of the big problem or the big concern that we had. So we were prepared to do some other things, you know, looking at some shock and some suspension stuff, but that ended up being the problem. And so we just kind of stopped there with the tires and we're super happy with that because obviously that saves us a little money, but hey, we got the problem solved, most important. So the second thing that we completed was I blacked out the tires. So I used some Plasti Dip and blacked out the tires and both the, the four, you know, tires that we have plus the spare. It just added kind of this very like tough, rugged look. I am stoked <laughs> about it. It's it's one of the cheapest and I think best things that we've done for the van. I just love it. So I think it was a great buy. I looked at buying like new rims for the, the van, but that would have been like an extra like thousand, twelve hundred bucks versus like 20 bucks for a couple cans of uh, some Plasti Dip. Definitely recommend it if you're interested. It's super easy to do. You simply just basically clean and prep the wheel. You spray it on in a couple of really thin coats till it kind of builds up and it's nice and thick and then you're done. And what's nice is if you want to, you can like basically use a pressure washer, take it off in the future, or you can leave it and just add to it or whatever you need to do. So super easy to maintain and glad I did it. All right, Hillary, play some of that footage. Whew. That was actually quite a bit of work, but I was able to clean the wheels, basically wiped them down. Then I came back with some cleaner, cleaned them off to make sure the paint sticks really well. It's actually not paint, it's plastic. But and then from there, I went ahead and I took a trash bag and I put it inside the wheel covering the brake rotor so we don't get any overspray on that. Oh, then I forgot. I also added, it's not required, but I added some tape around the rim of the wheel. That just makes cleanup a little easier at the end. So, so now I need to basically put a very light coat on just to give it something to stick to and then add four kind of not heavy coats, but you know, coats to actually cover everything. So I'll do the kind of the, the dusting first, then I'll do two regular coats. I'll actually back the van up about 18 inches or so. And that way I can make sure I get the other kind of bottom angle, make sure I get it covered really well. And then I will put another two coats on there. So five-ish coats, I guess, technically, we'll put on. So that's the next step. So I've got all of the wheels all nice and blacked out. You can kind of see here. I think the van looks pretty cool. Real quick, as we're getting ready for our East Coast trip, with less than two weeks to go, we have been working very hard to get this van ready. And today's sponsor, Jackery, is just one more step in that process to us getting ready to go. This is the Jackery Explorer 1000 Plus. Let me highlight why I think this is super practical and a necessity. We have both USB-A and USB-C charging. So this thing can charge with USB-A at 18 watts and USB-C at 1000 watts. And it has three 120 volt outlets with a built-in 2000 watt PureSign inverter built inside. 
It also has a 12 volt DC plug and a very easy to read display. So the other day when I was installing these bug screens, I started really early in the morning and it was still dark out. I ended up getting one of my huge LED lights to light up the side of the van so that I could do the work. And I used the Jackery. So after an hour and a half of working on the van, installing this bug screen, you know, before the sun came up and using the Jackery with this huge LED light, it only used 3% of the battery. And what made it really convenient is I didn't have to string a bunch of cords all over. As you guys know, we like to do a lot of boondocking and we have lots of plans for that when we're out on the East Coast. And this will come in super handy. As you can see, we've got a Kendall, some earbuds, an Apple Watch, a power bank, all charging, all at the same time. And one of the things that's actually pretty convenient is it's got this light on here. So like if you have an emergency, let's say the van breaks down, you can use this as your backup light, which obviously this has a huge battery and will last a very long time. You can also use it to signal for help, but then you can also use it for like, if you've got power tools or something like that, where you can, you don't have to rely on the van. If it's broken down, you can rely on this thing. All right, so here in the back, you've got a couple of different charging options. You can use a standard 120 volt outlet and charge it right here. Jackery sent us two 100 watt solar panels, so you can plug those in right here. And you might be wondering what this is here. This is for an extra battery bank. Now we don't have one, but that's a really awesome way to expand the capabilities of this system. The Jackery Explorer 1000 Plus boasts two key features. It has more capacity with 1,264 watt hours and a 2,000 watt inverter, and it supports up to 99% of devices. This thing is versatile and fast charging. When you charge this in the wall, it takes 1.7 hours, and if you use the solar panels, it only takes two hours. So here is one of the two solar panels that Jackery sent us, and these things are really well built. They've got some really nice built-in features. There's an indicator here to show you when the panel is lined up to the sun properly. The cables detach from the back so that they can store easily. And if you're just, you know, wanting to charge something, there's USB ports built into the cable for charging. So they have these very convenient legs that are on the back that help it stand up like that. All right, so if you guys are interested in getting your hands on one of these, this is gonna be part of the Prime Big Deal Days in October. So we'll put all of the information here on the screen and down below in the description. So the third item that we did was I actually did some prep for Starlink. So a lot of the class B vans that, uh, you know, that are manufactured actually come with coax cable. So like at an RV park, you could connect to their system. But of course I'm never gonna use that. So I actually removed the cable and installed a piece of Cat5 with an exterior RJ45 connection for our Starlink. So that was, quite a process, fishing the wire through the van, getting it to all line up properly. It was kind of a pain in the butt, but I did it, got it done. So my plan is that when we, you know, arrive to our destination, we want to set up the Starlink, you can actually just plug the Starlink in externally, and then the power supply and router will stay kind of fixed in the van. And this way I don't have to leave like a door or window open with the cord hanging out of it. We can actually kind of button up the van and you might be wondering, why didn't I mount it on the roof? Well, I've kind of gone back and forth, but there is some discussion on the internet about if you fix mount your Starlink panel on your roof, if you're you know, in trees or something like that, you have to move the van in order to get a signal. So we're gonna work with that for now, see how that works out. And we'll let you know in the future. Maybe, we'll, we, maybe we will mount it on the roof, maybe not, I don't know. But at least this way, I don't have to leave the door open when I'm using it. We're here in the van. Hopefully this air conditioner isn't too loud for you guys, but right here, there are some outlets and some other things, uh, some access, I should say, to like all of the power that's inside this cabinet. So in this cabinet right here is where we are going to mount our Starlink. We will have the network connection, the power, everything that we need all right up here. So behind here is where I actually need to get in so I can actually route my cable and it's gonna route down the wall behind this seat. And then there's a port um, for coax cable on the outside of the van. I'm gonna pull that and replace it with an RJ45 for the Starlink. So I need to tear this thing apart, get in there and get this thing ready for our Starlink, which should arrive hopefully later today.
All right, I had done a little pre-work taking off this bench right here, kind of trying to figure out what was going on. And down in here, I don't know if you can see it very well, this piece of cable that's right over here, that is the cable for the uh, coax, which runs up behind here, behind this window, and then up into the back of this cabinet. So I'm gonna start up here and see if I can fish that wire back down right there. So I don't know if you guys can see, this is the window kind of inside the van where the seat that's right here. And then you've got kind of a cassette. So the bathroom is actually kind of from this piece of glass back. But then right here is underneath the seat. That is our coax cable that we are trying to move or replace with at RJ45. So maybe I can get you guys set up and you can watch Some more self-tapping screws. I don't know if you guys can see, like right there, they didn't even like seal their holes to prevent any rust or repaint them or anything. Yeah, it's kind of annoying. All right, so as soon as I can get this punched out and the RJ45 back inside here, I'll be back. Okay, guys. Well, honestly, I'm a little disappointed with my handiwork. This little part, I pushed it out. Let's see if I can get a good look here. Pushed it out, tried to cut a new hole, but it's off center. Doesn't fit super well. Long story short, I think this one will work for today so I can get everything fit up and tested but I'm gonna have to buy a new cover and replace this uh, next time around. So kind of disappointed by that, but at least it'll get installed today. So I've got this cable installed here. I just need to take, take this end off. Oh God, this is annoying. So many parts that are being held together just by pressure. Well, that's the problem. The hole's not centered. Well, maybe I can still make this work then. As you can see, I'm about halfway done installing this Van Essentials rear bug screen on our van. And it's been a little bit of a challenge. I think getting started was the hardest part. But once you kind of got into a rhythm, things started to kind of flow and work out okay. But uh, it is a little time consuming. And as you can see, it's a little warm out. Yeah, I, I went ahead and elected to do this at night because it is so hot. It's like 105 or 108 during the daytime. It's still pretty warm right now, but we're getting it done. What I've gotten done so far is I basically positioned the screen. I put on all these little metal clips. You can kind of see them underneath here. Found it. I found it kind of useful to tap them in with a hammer because my fingers started to hurt from pushing them on. But uh, yeah, so I got everything kind of lined up, pre-positioned. And as soon as I finish putting on a couple more of these clamps, then we put the weather stripping around it and then we do the final trimming and we should be done. Awesome. Sounds easy. We'll see.
Actually, I think I've got everything all set. We just need to do the final trimming of kind of the excess material kind of in the corners specifically. Um, I checked everything else. It looks good. Fit seems to be really nice. And then I'll just remake the beds. Looks great. Who's impressed with him? I know I am. So we did get this off of Amazon. We'll link it down below if you want it, but it is a Van Essentials one. And I think we paid 200 and something dollars. I'll put it right there. I don't remember, but yeah, he did a great job. Done. Are you so happy with yourself? I'm very happy with myself. It looks good. I'm gonna make the beds, check final fit. Call tonight. So the fourth item that we got done is something that you guys just saw. So we worked on the bug screen. So I think I accidentally threw ours away, which was kind of a bummer because they're quite expensive to replace, but that was my mistake. And after our um, sliding door upgrade to our screen, I said, hey, I, let's just give it a try. So we purchased some more and I put those on tonight. Not as cheap as the... <laughs> yeah, they definitely were not $5, but they do look amazing. They fit really nice. They went on actually much easier than the sliding glass door, which maybe it's because I had tried it once. I don't know, but seemed to work out really well. Got it done and they look really nice. So super stoked about that. And so the fifth and final project that we have is actually installing and setting up our Starlink. So it's been a while that I have been dreaming about having Starlink. We go into some, you know, crazy off the wall places where we don't have service. It always makes Hillary nervous, not being able to connect with family or friends, or if something happens that we don't, when we don't have service. So this should solve all of that. Their prices have come down. And so we went ahead, pulled the trigger, got one, and I am super excited to show it to you guys tonight. So this is the Starlink Gen 3 panel. Um, there is a newer, smaller one, but we didn't need it. And it's actually like another $200. And so this will work just fine for our application. And it was $299 for all of the equipment. And then we purchased the Rome package and we did not purchase the unlimited uh, because that's like 165, I think a month. Um, so we went with the kind of the, the data plan. So that's 50 gigabytes a month for $50, which for our usage, we think that'll be good because, you know, as you guys know, we're not full timers. So we think 50 gigabytes should be plenty, but if not, we can always upgrade, give it a try, but let's get this thing open and take a look at it. Wow, that's a big panel. Where are you gonna put that? Where are you gonna store it daily? So, I'm thinking this is gonna go right up there. So up on our shelf, let's see, what is what is this? Oh, perfect, here we go. The instructions, you set it up, you plug it in, you turn it on, you get the app. I think I can handle that. The panel we plan to put on our shelf above the cab and store it there. I don't think there'll be any issues with that. So here's the router, the power supply, your power cable, and your ethernet cable. Oh, no, that's not it. Okay. Now, I am curious, if you have a Starlink, do you recommend some of the mounts that I've seen for kind of storing all of this stuff? Is it worth the money? And I've also seen lots of different mounts for your panels, like just ground mounts. So I'm curious, is there something out there that you guys recommend? Because now I'm in the market for it. So let me know what you think. So the way that this works, and this is important so you know how this works. That is true. Because you're, you're gonna be the first one to use it. So this is the power supply, okay? And you plug this into the outlet. 
This is like the router, like what goes upstairs and they only fit in one way, right? Okay. So that's plugged in. And then this, see this cable hopefully fits. Well, in here, but this, I'm just gonna plug it in with their cables for now. Okay, we need to go stick this outside now. All right, so let me, I did already download the Starlink app. Start setup. Well, it's telling me to come out here and stand, scan the entire sky. I'm not sure why. Okay, I'm ready. Are you finding a satellite? Let me see. Oh, it like. Oh, funny. Oh, here we go. Picking up all these little. Oh, there's some. What are you doing? View results. It says point it like that. Okay, try again. Oh, you didn't get it the first time? I don't know what I'm doing. You're collecting all the satellites. Don't you think? I think so. Okay. What's Starlink is powered on. Okay, yep. Wi-Fi is not configured. Downloading software update, configure the Wi-Fi. What is your network name? Now I have basically gone through the initial setup and I believe it's updating, but I'm also configuring the network with our personal information. So can't share that with you guys. Okay, so one thing I did notice is as soon as I plugged the like cord into whether it was the router or the dish, I guess, you, I noticed you couldn't really pull it out. So hopefully I still can pull it out. I need to figure that out. So if you guys know, can you actually pull that out or how do you remove that? Because I'd like to be able to use this exterior connection I put on the van and I hope I can. So let me know, hang on. Now I gotta Perfect. finish, gotta finish setting up. All right, so we have everything all set up now. So we have the power supply plugged in, the router, which we're just kind of positioning here for a minute. And then we threw the panel outside. We basically lined it up, got everything all configured, set up the inner, or set up the wireless network, got everything all updated and verified and logged in. So it was actually fairly easy. It took a few minutes for everything to just power up, update, cycle through, get in, you know, access to everything. But all in all, it was pretty easy. Let me just check the speed while we're sitting here. So it's running a quick speed test. Seventy-ish gigabytes down, and how many up? Oh, twenty. So we're getting about. 80 megabytes down and 20 megabytes up. That's not bad. Can we work with that? Oh, absolutely. This is phenomenal speed. This is like, you can stream movies and all sorts of stuff with this. So this is perfect. I mean, there are some really cool statistics in the app so you can go through and look at everything. It's pretty awesome. So have to make sure Hillary is up to speed on how to use all of this because she will be the first one using it on the trip. So she needs to make sure she understands what's going on with all this. That is all five of our tasks. So new tires, blacked out the tires, prepped for Starlink, bug screens, and, and finally setting up and programming the Starlink. All done. All right, I think that's the last of our big projects before our trip. So, all right, until next time. Bye guys.